should be going on? Does this pop up for you? No, nothing yet. It's giving me 19 seconds, 21 seconds, okay. and we are in. I just got uh, You got all right, something. I just, just you got a notification. Nope. Uh huh. I'm sorry, is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to see if I get it on mine. I'm not seeing it. So, okay. Well, that's where we are. That's where we are. Let's see. Uh, Denise is in the house. All right. Hello, sis. Oh, no, it's Desiree. I'm sorry. See, look at my eyesight. All right. So, hello, hello, hello. Diva in the house with G Mecca and LaShonda K. We're going to get this thing started. So, see what the topic is. You see, this is one of my favorite topics uh, manifesting. You know, it's just a lot of fun for me to talk about. And right now, I want want to introduce you to my sis, LaShonda K. Hello. Hello. Hey, how are you? Wonderful, wonderful. I am um, actually trying to just, you know, give me one. Okay. So what we're talking about today is we're talking about manifest. Sorry about that. I'm yeah, seeing universal law. So this is going to be a very fun session uh, for us. It should be. Uh, we're going to talk some deep stuff too. Hello, Carly. Hey, Justin. So we're going to do this thing and just we're going to have a lot of fun with it. Uh, and I'm excited. This is our second session with uh, Shonda Kate. And uh, she's going to talk to us about being on. So uh, we're glad that you all, you all could join us. We hope you get something from this uh, session. And if you have questions, please leave them below because, you know, we appreciate when you uh, give us feedback and ask questions. Hello, David. Navarro. What was that? Navarro uh, from Argentina. Hello, David. So we're going to do this thing. I know, I, I know me, uh, me amigos in Argentina. Quiero hablar vos en español. Necesito practicar mucho más porque esa información es muy importante. Quiero vos conocer esa información también. Pero español no es bueno para mí a decirte esa información muy bien. Entonces, dame un momento. Otra vez yo puedo hacer un video con el letras. Entendés en el letras en el video para vos. Pero hoy necesito hablar en inglés. Pero gracias por tu amor. Gracias por tu atención. All right. Diva hey, is in the house. You ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Uh -oh. I don't know what's going on with my little screen now. Yeah. All right. Let me see. What is this? Is it blurry on your end? Let me know. Um, and please let us know if you can hear uh, LaShonda well and um, if you can hear uh, myself well. If you can't, please let us know. Is this blurry on your end, LaShonda? Or is it coming through clear? No, I can see. I mean, is it is not blurry? Yeah. It is? I mean, it's not, you know, it's not HD but I can see you, it's not, it's not too, you know, it's, it's good. All right. Um, so again, we're going to get in <laughs> on these, um, these sessions and Shonda K, tell us what you got going on. Uh, first of all, again, it's, it's a pleasure to uh, work with you again. I don't know what I'm doing with this thing. Hold on for a second. All right, here we go. Hold on. I can't hear your voice. Now, if we have technical difficulties, y'all bear with us because we know we know how to rig something and make it right. Shonda, okay, there we go. There we go. 
All right. So yeah, tell us about G Mecca and what it is and what's going on with it. Um well G Mecca Well G Mecca um is is pretty much a vision <clears throat> that came about years ago. Um but since Empress Diva Lurie and I, since we've linked up, I guess bringing it into fruition and kind of finalizing the whole the whole vision of it and what it's going to be about. So pretty much, we are looking to better place in a nutshell. I know you're ready to do, ready to do some um, some street work, some leg work, you know. So we are right now organizing. I don't know if you guys know, but Diva Lurie, she is also a performing artist. So, you know, she sings, she raps, um, she dances, she's a DJ, she has many different talents. So what I have done is helped her book a tour music um, where we can help artists, you know, release their projects, so on and so forth. Um, but even more so than that, it's a company that's going to be for people. Um, the first project that we are working on is something called The Village, where we are going to be able to um, help women who are in need of, you know, whatever it is you need, whatever needs you have for yourself and your children. Uh, we also are putting in place putting in place some, some uh, things for the men as well to help you too. But GMAC is pretty much going to be something where we can utilize music to uplift, to encourage, to teach, um, like what we're doing today, you know, just coming in and speaking to you all. We're going to be setting up some seminars in Texas within the next couple of weeks. We're going to talk about contract law. We're just going to get into the whole of this existence and what's real. And so, you know, that's going into what is going to be discussed today. What's really real um, in this earth? You know, everything is an illusion. Everything that we have been told to believe is it's not true or it's the total opposite of the truth, I should say. So, you know, we're getting into these laws. We're going to, um, today we're going to show you how to start manifesting um, positive energy, uh, your needs being met, peace. I mean, anything you could possibly imagine that will bring good to your own life. Um, that's what we're going to be discussing and, and showing you how to apply these laws. Uh, but pretty much, G um, we are looking to, you know, help the whole earth just get back in balance, you know, through knowledge, wisdom, understanding, again, music, different programs, and just us coming together. Um, you know, as a people at the end of the day. So, so, you know, Empress, if you want to elaborate on that, but I do want to mention that it's a, that GMECA is an acronym. Um, it stands for God's and man's eternal quest to conquer all. all. And so now that we have an understanding, it is, right? Um, it just makes so much sense. So, so I'm just grateful to be in this moment uh, in this day and time and doing my part um, for the, the grand scheme of things, man. Are. Excellent. All right. So, where what we're doing today, like I said, we're going to be dealing with uh, manifesting, and yeah. So, we've got a lot of project products, projects coming up, and uh, we just we're looking to be able to, um, again, as we travel, get people around, especially uh, within the next couple of months within uh, no North America. We're, it's just a serious tour that we're doing. And so I'm really excited about this. Now, um, please, anybody, if you're in the, in the post, if you can hear us, please let us know. If you can't hear my voice or you can't hear um, LaShonda's voice, let us know so that we can, uh, you know, we can correct some things because we're still, you know, you know how these, these uh, we have problems sometimes technical difficulties so we want to get that fixed all right so um Rashonda, we're talking once again we're talking about manifesting uh using universal laws and we're talking about the law of compensation the law of duality and the law of attraction about these laws the universal laws i mean that is a whole session all by itself so what i want to do is um to dive into these main three 
uh, the, the law of the law of duality and the law of attraction and talk about how um, they play a role in manifesting. So, you know, I'm going to let you, uh, you know, start us off and how you want to uh, go about you know, I want you to ask me the question so we can get into it. I mean, well, let's jump into, you know, the law of attraction and how um, pretty much that works. You know, what is that law and how is it even manifesting in our lives today unknowingly um, based on where our, where our head is, the, the thoughts that we have? You know, how does that law affect us based on our thoughts, the law right. of attraction? So one of the things that we're not understanding is that everything in our dimension, everything that, uh, you know, is we're seeing the people who are, um, we are with, who we're married to, our children, our mothers, our fathers, our families, that is a reflection of who we are. It really is. And we don't understand that we are creating all of that with our energy. So we're talking about the law of attraction. Basically, that's dealing with how everything that um, you think, everything is in here, is reflecting on the outside. And so again, if what you have in here is positive, then you're going to attract positivity. You're going to attract what you're putting up here. So if you're putting worries up here, if you're putting negative energy up here, that's what you're going to attract. The law of attraction is very real. I've had people tell me, I don't believe in the law of attraction. You don't have to believe in it. But I know from whatever you're getting and whatever is around you, I know what's in your mind. Because the universe is speaking and telling us uh, by way of whatever you gave birth to or whomever you gave birth to, whomever you're with in your life as a partner, that's what you attracted to you. So we're not getting that everything outside of us is only a reflection. What's real? What's the real world? Right here. All right. So everything you're seeing is something that has already within what we call the matrix or the ether or the, uh, the darkness. That's where it's already happened in the feminine. That's where it's already happened. This, what you see out here is the masculine, a mask. That's what masculine means, a mask. This is just a reflection of what already happened in your mind. So that's what we're dealing with when we're talking about the law of attraction. If whatever you want, you got to plant the seed here. This is this is uh, the, the, um, the womb or the ether or the soil, all right? When you plant a seed, if it's a positive seed, see the only thing that can grow from that positive seed is positivity and positive is the only thing that can grow if you're planting uh, again that's what we want to get to well all we're planting is positive seeds we want to because the you know one of the biggest things um in this battle is knowing how to control what you think your thoughts are controlling your seeds because we don't understand when we're watching the media and people are, are filling us with fear when people are filling us with stress we're filling our, we're putting seeds into our mind, but we're going to learn how to control that. And so then we're going to learn how to water those seeds. All right. Did that answer your question, sis? I'm sorry. I know how I had these long answers. <laughs> no, definitely. I mean, and this goes, you know, um, to say, you know, why the number one weapon against us is mind control why they seek to control our minds because when you, can, when you can control the mind, of course, the body follows. So, you know, it's very important, um, the thoughts that you have, you know, in the midst of trials and tribulation, and I can attest for this myself because I'm going through some trials of my own, you know, and it's easy to get sucked into stress and anxiety and all of these things with situations that you just cannot control. Um, you know, and then uh, like the Empress was talking to me this morning, you know, cause I was like, you know, my finances ain't where I want it to be. Um, and I have all of this debt that I need to take care of. And so, you know, the first thing she asked, well, you know, is it something that you can just say, oh, fuck it. It's not that serious, you know? And if not, then it is a way to work out everything to where these things that are happening in our life around us are not consuming us. 
you know, and, and taking away our joy at the end of the days, you know. So um, for me, I am actually practicing these laws real time, like right now in my life and learning how to say, instead of saying, well, I don't want to, I'm not trying to have to go through that, or I don't want, or I can't, speaking instead what I do want. So, you know, it's very important um, to take out the negativity out of our own mouths, you know, about ourselves or anything um, that's related to our life. We have to speak more positive if we want more positive results. We can't keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. We got to switch it up. Right. So, yeah. so, you know, Empress, can you give us some examples um, to kind of, you know, bring the people down to earth as to what we're speaking about? Yeah, well, you know, when you speak about that, again, I, I've said this before, um, we tend to, um, we don't understand how important words are. Words are spells. When we're speaking, we're spelling. And, you know, when people say we're going to spell this out on this paper, that's that's not a happenstance word a spell meaning uh it's almost a curse or a a spell meaning you are conjuring all right and that's the problem that we don't we don't realize our power in our thoughts and our words that we're speaking we're conjuring say this and make sure i answer the question sis <laughs> just in case i get off on a tangent but uh here's the deal all letters are words every letter in the alphabet it is its own word and when we're talking about syllables syllables are compound words so now you're taking compound words and building other compound words and we don't even understand that we're uh, cursing ourselves every time we open our mouth so what we have to do we're, as we learn etymology we got to get into uh, you know these words and how um, you know we're using them and they have been purposely manipulated so that we have forgotten um, that we're spelling on ourselves. The other thing we have we have been you know taught to think about is the negative. Well, I don't want this and I don't want that. Well, you can't even live in the not. If you want to you know have the positive, you again, you must live in the future. Meaning, how, what am I saying? Again, when we are spelling everything we're speaking out of our mouths is talking about the seed that's in our head if we're talking about not we're, we're talking about a negative seed that's in our head we want to plant positive seeds where we're talking about what will be what shall be this is why when i get into sessions with people uh my thing is tell me what you see what you want it to be and then speak on it as though it is you, you follow what I'm saying? Tell me what you want it to be and then speak on it as though it is because this is the future right here. You hear people where well, they'll say, you know, I wrote down uh, two years ago that I wanted to work for such and such and I wanted to do this and it happened. Well, yeah, you put the seed up here and then you spoke it and you wrote it. You spelled it out, spelled. So... You know, when we're talking, that, that those are examples about how we are constantly manifesting um, with our words and our thoughts, but we're not truly understanding what we're doing and what we're doing. Um, did I answer your question, sis? Yes, I mean, we can, you know, go a little deeper into it because, you know, even with myself, um, for instance, with my son, you know, he'll, he'll just like this, you know, he was just um, showing out, you know, falling out and everything like that, or or even some of his mannerisms or things that he do, you know, I'd be like, well, that boy out the chain, you know, and, and even tend to talk about people, you know, and so when you talk about the law of attraction and that everything outside of us is a reflection of who we are, how does that apply um, to just, you know, us casually casting thoughts or our opinions on people and as far as how we feel or how they make us feel. How does that, um, you know, apply to uh, those thoughts or, or words that we may say? The law of attraction. All right. So I'm trying to make sure I understand uh, what the question is. So you're saying how, do, how does our thoughts and feelings about others 
come into effect when we're dealing with the law of attraction. I'm trying to make sure I understand. Apply. Huh? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so when, and it's, I mean, because I'm, I'm not sure if I understand the question fully, but basically when, you know, when we are dealing with other people, the first thing we want to, um, again, do is make sure we're dealing with it with love in the sense that we're not allowing our dealings with them to stress us out. That's, that's just the first thing. If, if, and I know, I know this is hard for some people because they might be thinking, well, I can't just walk away from this and I can't just walk away from that. Um, but if it's stressing you out, then you want to find a way to uh, deal with it in such a way where it doesn't. And that's not the easiest thing. That's not the easiest thing. Um, I'm not sure if I fully understand the question about how the law of attraction works with that. But what I am saying is if it's stressing you out, then let me see if I can give you an example about um, how this law of attraction works. For example, um, I'll get people who will say to me, um, you know, with somebody who they was, they're dating and they're telling me all these negative things about who they are. And this person is, um, this and this person is a, a cheater and he's a liar. He's a stealer. And what they're not understanding is that everything that they're telling me about that person is a reflection of who they are. And I, I mean, I, I have had this conversation plenty of time, but one of them comes into mind. It was just so clear date and how they were cheaters. And then they were uh, dishonest and they were not forthcoming. And then everything she started telling me about herself was exactly same thing that she was saying about them and she wasn't understanding that she was getting that energy because she was so what i'm saying is you're attracting to you what you're putting out if somebody is in there and i know i know we don't see it because we want to be victims we want to think we're victims oh it wasn't my fault i didn't do that i mean <laughs> I'm going to go into this and then I want to get into the positive stuff. I want to get into the fun stuff of actually manifesting. But when we're talking about, you know, even any abuse, let's talk about, you know, women who are in abusive relationships. Listen, she's not a victim. They want to call her a victim, but she is somebody who's in that kind of relationship. First of all, she doesn't love herself because if she did, she wouldn't allow somebody to abuse her in that way, period. Normally, these are people who have come from that kind of situation in the past where there, you know, there was abuse going on in the home. So if that's what you're used to, you don't understand about loving yourself. So you're going to allow somebody else to do that. And so we want to think they're victims and we want to run to their rescue. Well, what happens when you do that? If, if anybody who's ever dealt with somebody in an abusive situation, they've tried to run to their rescue. Well, what happens? And you have... Um, men who are brothers go over and try to beat the male up what happens the brother ends up in jail and she ends up back with him you understand i'm saying we're in control the things that we uh, that are happening we're allowing them and i understand that it's a it's a sad situation it's an unfortunate situation or whatever but but all of this comes down to the woman and her being willing to understand to love herself and take control of her situations period I mean, I know that sounds like, oh, that's easier said. Yeah, it's easier said. But if you really start to learn to love yourself, then that's what you're going to start to manifest in your life what you want. And I have to say it like that because, again, for their specific situation, start learning to love yourself. Find out where your peace is, what makes you happy, and then move towards it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's that's great. And, you know, because there's so many components and just so many ways you can go with this. I wanted to add, just to clarify, how does the energy that you put out reflect you? How does that, you know, in using this this lady and talking about the guy, well, he's a liar, he's a cheater, he's, he's a thief. But if I'm not those things, then how is the energy I'm putting out attracting that? You can't not be those things. 
<laughs> I'm gonna tell you, you can't not be those things. If you get, if you're getting that energy, it is only energy that you have put out. Okay, that is period. I mean, I know we want to again, we want to act like we're victims. But if you're getting that energy somewhere, you put it out. We like when we're talking about lying, we lie to ourselves all the time. Don't we? You understand? Okay, and you say, oh, I'm gonna just give you a, a, a basic rough. situation. When we're doing um, somebody, oh, I'm gonna do a New Year's resolution, you know, and I'm gonna uh, stop eating this and I'm gonna stop eating that. And I'm gonna stop. And then we don't do none of that. Two weeks into it, we don't even make it to two weeks. And we we back drinking Cokes, eating potato chips, Doritos, and whatever we think we big and bad enough to do. You understand? You just lie to yourself. But then when it comes back in your face in the sense of a dude who's lying to you all the time, we want to, that ain't me, I don't do that. Well, yes, you do. That's why it's about integrity and understanding who you are. Because if you don't have integrity, you can try to fool all these other people. You ain't gonna fool Diva Larie. You ain't gonna fool people who really know the universal laws and understand energy. You ain't fooling me. You can fool yourself. I get what you know, people, especially women with this, where they want to act like, no, I I eat healthy and I eat, and that's like, yeah, no, you don't. I'm I'm on a plant-based diet. Yeah, okay, yeah, you got some plants and some sugar that you know your body is not your body, what you're doing yeah you, you can't you can't lie to people who know the truth you understand what i'm saying you feel me so when when you say well what if i'm not indeed you can't not indeed because it's just an energy you 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 don't know you don't know how many times people you know like i said i sit and i, I deal with a lot of clients and you don't know how many times they like I said, they just told me who they are by telling me what somebody else did to them. Well, I'm, okay, yeah. So, and I told you, let me tell you, let me give you this one example. And then I want to get to the fun stuff. I don't want to be deep on this, but I'm going to give you an, an example. Um, I have, I've had several clients. They'll come to me and they go, uh, well, Diva, I was a victim of, um, what, what do they call it? Um domestic violence and he just he beat me up and he he did and you know oh, oh they victim 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 and then i'm like now listen and i go okay uh tell me about the other domestic violence case because i already know there's huh yeah tell me about the other domestic violence case uh, oh, oh, well, you know, that one, that one was already, uh, that, that was taken care of because, you know, it was me and this woman who, uh, you know, we got into it and, uh, you know, I, you know, but, uh, and, and want to almost damn near brag about how she beat the hell out the woman, but, you know, they said I wasn't guilty. Okay. They might've said you wasn't guilty, but the universe is telling you you're guilty because she's put somebody else in place to deliver the energy back to you that you delivered to that woman who you beat the hell out of the other time. This happens every time. You can't not be you. It can't not be what you do. You follow what I'm saying? You don't. <laughs> right. That's that's all I'm saying. These are just energies. No, I do. I'm with you, 100. percent So, um, but yeah, that's that's Indeed. what we are. You Indeed. know, again, the law of attraction. Well, I mean, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, you you go, you you flowing, Empress. I just wanted to make sure that you know the people understood. Okay. You know what this law of attraction is, and so you've given some really great examples. You know of how we lie. So it's people lying to themselves. Yeah. It's, it's, listen. Um. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. I <laughs> I talk a lot about integrity and how difficult this role. We have we have to learn to look at self, and that is not easy to do. We've been used to using the term victim and whatever when there's no such thing as a victim. And and we've been used to thinking that, oh, we're we're being picked on or we're being 
being, you know, subjugate. But the truth is, all of this is energies that we have brought upon ourselves. Now I can go deep into this because that I want that to be um, actually using these laws to manifest because there are so many examples that we have experienced on our own that lies are universal law. We're always talking about karma. Well, karma is a universal law. You know, we need to understand that and discover that. Um, and that's why we talk about these other, um, these main three laws, like I said, that we want to get into because um, as we get, you know, as we start to really um, dive into these laws and learn how to use them, a whole world of, of, of remedy, a whole world of uh, solutions open up to you. And we stop thinking about money as the end all be all because it is not. Um, we need to start understanding that we live in abundance. And that's what these other laws uh, that we're going to talk about go into. So, but yeah, with the law of attraction, I can beat the heck out of it because <laughs> there's so much to it. But in a nutshell, you what, what we're on is a spiritual journey. This is a spiritual journey and it is not easy because it deals with looking at self. And when we're talking to these women, um, as we start to understand our powers and who we are, and you're talking about you're a God, then guess what? You can't be a God and a victim. You can't. If you're a God, then you know how to control your energies and manifest the things into your dimension that you want. That's where we're going with understanding these universal laws. If you're talking about you're a victim, then you're not ready for this road because you're going to miss all. See, she has a language and she speaks to us through energies. All she seeks is balance. If you put out an energy, it must come back. If you put out an energy by law, it must come back. So if you, when you're understanding her language and how she speaks and you understand a lot of what's going on, not only in your life, but other people's lives. In your life is going to be more difficult to, uh, you know, to diagnose it because it's so close to you. You emotional. That's why we need to learn how to pull back. We need to learn how to see the future. See it. See all the stuff about uh, uh, tra time travel. We do it all the time. We do it all the time. But we don't learn how to travel to uh, that place where we want it to be. When you stop living in the not. You're going to see your whole life turn around and live in the, the future and what you want it to be. You'll see your whole life change. All right. So <laughs> did, I, did, I, did I go into that um, and answer that? Tell me, tell, me, tell me if you have any questions or thoughts. I want to know. Definitely. So if you want to get into, you know, how to apply. Oh, no. Um, I don't have have my Facebook up because it's the it's just too much with both of the screens. I can't hear. So you'll have to read the comments, any questions um, or comments on your end. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, tell us about how to apply um, properly the law of attraction to get, you know, what those things that we want or to change our lives for the better. Uh, let's see. I'm just trying to make sure I'm trying to see if um you know if your volume is up because I, I meant to check on that. Uh let's see. And I don't know if this is even coming in clearly for everyone, but yeah, the video's fine. I checked out on this. Okay. So everything is running smooth. Okay, so I don't, we don't have any questions as of yet, and we're still running good. So um, let's get back to this. All right, so tell me, tell me your question one more time. Tell me your question one more time. Um, how do we apply the law of attraction? Okay. Uh, the law of attraction, you know, to manifest what we want uh, our lives to be. Okay, so I want to uh, I want to talk about how we apply. You know, I've talked about that's how you, you apply the law of attraction by recognizing 
uh, what you're bringing into uh, your dimension. You know, whatever male that you're mating with or whatever people, your friends that you're hanging around, even your family members, um, what you want to do is uh, recognize uh, that you've attracted this with your energies. Because uh, I'm going to say this and then I'm, I'm moving on because I want to talk about the law of compensation, which is one of my favorite laws. Um, when we're talking about, um, you know, these vessels that we're in, we tend to think, oh, everything started when I was, you know, in my, you know, one years old or when I was in my mother's womb. But you're spirit. You've been here. And so what we have to understand is, you know, you contracted with your mother on a spiritual contract to be in this dimension. You, you knew her before you got here. That's what we're not getting. We're, we're just thinking about this dimension, but there's a whole spiritual realm that we're missing um, because we don't, uh, we don't go deeper. We don't go into metaphysics. And so when we're talking about the universal laws, they go all into that. Uh, I mean, even when you look at other sciences like uh, uh, astrology, when you look at uh, numerology, those are very serious. And when I really get good at those, uh, I know your past, present, and future, and you don't have to speak because your vessel has told me who you are. You understand? So that's applying the law of attraction. All right. I want to get on the law of compensation because what are we talking about with the law of compensation? The universe compensates you for everything you put out. Now, this is where when you put out an energy again this is the main principle of the universal law when you put an energy out by law it must come what you have to understand is when you put a seed out or when you put an energy out one no she's going to send many back to you this goes into natural law and understanding that we live in abundance but we've been taught to hoard. We've been taught to uh, uh, that we live in scarcity and you better put your money away. You better save your money. That is, we live in abundance. So what am I talking about when I say that in, in, in the law, the laws dealing with nature? Well, when you plant a seed and you put, you plant that seed in a good soil and you water it and you take care of it, it the universe is going to give you many of those seeds back, right? That's how she works, isn't it? Hello? You plant an apple, apple seed, she gonna give you many seeds back, isn't she? Hello? You with me? That's right. So that is the law of, that is one of the natural laws. We live in abundance. So when we're talking about the law of compensation, when you plant one seed back, when you when you put out an energy that that energy is going to return to you uh many fold all right depending on what energy you put out that's the energy that turns to you many fold so how what am i saying if i i put out an apple uh, put out an uh, apple seed in the ground only thing going to grow from that apple seed is an apple tree I ain't gonna get no pears like my uncle said. I'm not gonna get uh, oranges, oranges. Oh, I'm gonna get, plant a negative seed. The only thing I can get from a negative seed is what? Negativity. And if that's what you're seeing in your dimension, that's what you put in your ether, in your mind, in your soil, in your womb. You gave birth to that and you watered that seed. And if that's what you're seeing, then you and you don't like what you see in all these trees because all these things in your dimension they're just like trees. If you don't like those trees, you need to start planting some different seeds in your soil. You follow what I'm saying? You got to plant different seeds in your soil. That means you need to think different thinking so that what is reflecting outside of this soil, this this matrix, this womb, is positivity. That's the only thing that's going to come from a positive seed is positivity. Every thought that you have is a seed. It's an energy. Every thought, every word that you speak 
is spelling. It is a seed. It is energy. So we need to be very careful about what we're allowing to go up here and what we're allowing to come out of our mouth. Because as we do that, we are building our future. If you want a different future, put out different words, plant different seeds. All right. Law of compensation. So what are seeds? Did I, did I explain that okay, sis? Are you you good with that? You, get, you have any questions on it? What's that? No. All right, now I'm not I'm not gonna be able to look at those uh those questions. No ma'am. Okay, so I'm not gonna be able to look at those questions. If you're able to get to them, please help us out because uh it's harder for me to uh hold on, let me see if I can maybe see see online with this one. So because I, I wanna when I get into this, I want it would be good to know if people have questions so that I can um I can answer them before I get out of here. Let me know. I'm gonna try to turn this. Uh, maybe I can turn the volume down on this computer. One second, and then I can uh, maybe see the questions if there are any. All right. So here's here's what I want to get into. Um, can I get the volume down? All right. So I'm in, I'm just trying to see if I can get this volume down, and then I can. Um, all right, see if I can get in this live session and see the questions. All right, so here we go. Um, so when we're talking about the law of compensation, again, I use this law so much so that I can manifest. And, and I'll, I, I like to talk about, you know, give examples of how I use this law to manifest uh, and how real it is. Because one of the things we're not, we're not understanding is that when we're... Uh, Again, when we put out a seed, these natural laws come into place. You put it out, it must come back. Uh, I had a sister that I was working with a while back and uh, she kept saying to me, this is when I first really, that spiritual journey really started hitting me. And she said, uh, she kept saying, if you want it, you must give it away. And that's a universal law. If you want it, you must give it away. If you want knowledge, you must give knowledge. If you want love you must give love if you want money you must give money and we need to learn how to uh do this patient because the universe must by law return the things to you that you put out so how do i use this just with anything like i'll, I'll, I'll get into money but I, i'm going to give get into some things things um you know, when I really started using this law of compensation and how uh, it, I used it to work with me on certain things. Like, for example, um, I toured in Argentina when I, was, when I was really putting these universal laws into effect. And I was like, okay, what I'm going to do, I want a better hotel room. I was like, yeah, I want to stay in better hotels. I want, uh, and I don't want to pay a lot for them. And um, what else? Did I, was, I just had all these stipulations that I wanted. And so, but those are the main two. I want a better hotel. I don't want to pay a lot. And because I want to try to eliminate, I have three bills, by the way, where I live, what I eat, my transportation. That's it. That's how I like it. And um, that's what I've been doing. So what ended up happening is I, I was like, okay, if you want it, you must give it away. And again, we're dealing with the law of compensation. If you want it, you must give it away. And so I, I remember I had a show at a, um, a hotel uh, and I, was like, okay, tonight I'm going to give away a hotel room. That's what I'm going to do. And so what ended up happening is I did the show and I had this woman and she was like, oh, Diva, thank you so much for your music. It was beautiful. It was wonderful. I enjoyed it. And uh, she, she, she was very generous with her tip. And I was like, thank you. What room are you staying in? And she told me. And so I was like, I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to give her uh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna pay for her hotel room and that's what i decided law of uh compensation i was like i'm gonna pay for her, her hotel room and that's what i did so what ended up happening is um you know i paid for it i made sure she got it because i went to the concierge i was like here's the money for her room make sure she's taken care of and so what ended up happening is um i went to the next city to do you know as i was continuing on my tour and i had to find a hotel so I went to this hotel, this nice hotel, 
And I uh, asked the guy, I said, do you have any rooms? Because all the other places, they didn't have, you know, room for me. But this guy, he was like, yeah, I have a room. And he showed me the room, nice room. He's like, yeah, it's going to be 800 bucks. And I was like, okay. He's like, well, how, how long are you staying? And he said, I said, I'm, I'm, I'll be here for like five five days to a week or whatever. He's like, oh, okay, well, well, what do you do is what he asked me. And I, cause you know, I'm melanated, you know, what are you doing here? Cause I, I'm not from there. He's, and I told him, I said, I sing, I do jazz, hip hop, R and B, whatever, uh, you know, blues. He was like, really? Well, I have a big group here. Would you be interested in doing a show for the group? Now I told you, he told me the place was 800, but because I was staying five to seven days, he was like, well, I can give it to you for 400. And I said, and I, and that's when he asked me, what do you do? Um, so after that, he says, what do you do? Would you be interested in doing a show? And I was like, yes, absolutely. And so I told him though, I said, but don't, uh, what I want to do is instead of you paying me, I just do the room, comp, comp the rooms for the whole week and that's fine. So now I don't know if you understand, this is not happenstance stuff. Nothing is happenstance or everything is energy. I'm at a point now where I got the, the, the hotel and it's a nice hotel, like I asked for, a better hotel and it's, it's paid for. And I get to do what I love to do and that sing and when I sing, people always tip and most of them they tip, they pay, they end up paying me more. I end up making more off of it than the, the place that um, hired me would have paid me in the first place. So you're understanding this is just one, I, I do this with so many, with water, I've done it with, I, I can't, so many things. And of course I do it with money. So I get, I'll get into that as well. If you all have any questions, um, please uh, let me know, please ask them so that I can, uh, you know, answer them. And maybe my sister, Shonda, if you're listening, well, I think she's there. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know what your, what your thoughts are on that. If, if I ask, uh -huh. answer, yeah. answer your question. Hello, but Shonda. No, I mean, the main thing is, you know, getting an understanding of these laws that I have not yet um had an opportunity to look into the law of compensation and the law of duality so i'm learning today okay do you have any questions about what i said no not at all we're listening <laughs> okay all right so um what we're looking to do uh or what i want to go into a little bit is how we are manifesting and we're not fully understanding how what we're doing because i say we we as women are putting out energies all over this planet and we you know don't understand that we're the ones who's bringing these energies back to ourselves so let's look at some things this, i like to talk about this sister because all of us know this, this kind of sister who uh that sister that um she goes, she, you know, I, I talked about this in one of my other videos, but that Frankie Beverly and Mays concert comes up, you know, she's like, oh, I'm going to that concert, but the house note is not paid, the rent ain't paid, <laughs> the car note is not paid, but what she has done is she's put it in her mind, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to that concert, she already saw herself there, she already saw herself in the outfit, because she's telling you I'm going to all right, I'm going to get a nice outfit and I'm going with my girls and I'm going to get me some shoes and I'm going to get my hair done. You ain't paid, not in every bill. How you going to manifest that? I don't know, but I'm going to get it done. You understand what I'm saying? So now what happens? You got this sister who she's going to spend, how much does Frankie Beverly Mays tickets cost? $75, $50, how much they cost? $50. All right, let's say $50. They cost $50. I'm going to write this down because I'm going to do some math. I always do math with people. Let's do this math on this thing. Frankie Beverly Mays tickets cost $50. And she's going to get another one for her girl because we're going together, honey. Well, $100, $100 for that Frankie Beverly Mays uh, ticket. Now, how much she going to spend 
on her hair. You got to pay, what, eight, 80 bucks for hair? All right. How much she going to spend on the outfit? <laughs> how much that outfit cost? You know what I'm saying? Let's say she spent 50 bucks because, honey, I got to look good when I go to my Frankie Beverly and May's concert. And she going to buy her some shoes. That's another 80. How much she has spent on that? Uh, and she still has not paid, not never bill. What, how much is that? The 60. Y'all got me counting. Nine, okay. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm writing this down. Uh, three hundred dollars, three hundred and ten dollars. All right. So, and, and and people gonna trip about that. She spent three hundred and ten dollars, and she ain't her baby ain't got no food. Okay. Well, watch this now. What I say about the law of compensation. All right. When you plant a seed, by law, when you water it and and you put it out there. The universe must return it. Now, understand what this sister just did. And see, we're not getting this. She she put in her mind, this is this is energy that's positive right here. We think it is, it's frugal. She's uh, not frugal, but uh, fruitless. We think of it as a fruitless thing that she's doing. But she's put, she's put it in her mind that she really wants to do something to make herself feel good. You understand? She's going to take care of herself. Because I want to go to Frankie Beverly Mays. I'm going to do this. And I don't care what nobody says. And this makes her feel good. That's a positive energy she's putting out. She got to put down $310 for every last one. Of them. And she's going to put that out into the universe. And it's going to be positive. She's going to be happy to pay for her hair. She's happy to pay for those tickets. She's happy to pay uh, 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 for those shoes. And the outfit... This makes her feel good. And so the universe, when she's putting that kind of positive, happy energy behind those $310, they must come back by law. Now, I'm going to tell you what I found. The same way when I went, when I, when I paid for that girl's hotel room, normally I'll, I'll, when I put out seeds, I can see a return. And that's just the upfront return. I don't know what's going on because I'm still learning this, these laws. But the upfront return, I can see that within seven seven days normally. Normally seven days, I see a return. So I know when I put out $1, I'm going to get five back. This is law of compensation. This is just a, a basic. I know I'm going to get at least five back. All right? So when, you know, this is just a, listen, the better your energy is, and I'm going to talk on that, the more positive your energy is, because remember, these are seeds the better you can direct the currency back to you. Now, I'm speaking electric terms. Energy, currency. You understand? So when I put out a positive energy, I can direct the currency back to me. There is no blockage of the flow. You understand? Okay, listen, I'm ready. I'm doing some math now. I'm going into math. She put out $310. Now, I'm, I'm telling you the base when you experience of all these times that I've used the, uh, the laws to manifest, I know I see five at least coming back. Now, let's say she put out her, uh, her uh, $310 and she gets uh, five, five return on every one that she put out. That's uh, $1,550. All right. Now, when you start talking about a house note, can she pay the house note the $700? Can she pay the car note the $300? Can she buy the baby food? Well, yeah, because the universe is going to send that back to her because she put it out. We're not understanding. They live in abundance. And when we let go of things with love, they must return to us by law. This is include money. This includes whatever clothes you give away. When you put it out with love, the universe must return it to you many times over that's the law so that's just one of the things that i um have seen do you have any questions on that Ashanda? any thoughts any input? no ma'am i'm just still adding people to the talk okay all right no i mean it it makes sense you know i'm just reflecting on times that i've given and i know that i don't give to receive like i don't give to receive but like you were saying you know even when we're speaking about showing when you do something for someone how that has been and 
um, you know, we were taught to kind of not do that because that's, you know, trying to show out this, that, and the third. So, you know, I know that usually when I give to someone, I'm not looking to, I'm not doing it to get something back. I'm doing it to help them. So, so where does, where does this law of compensation come into play? Is that something that we should be expecting? Should we, should we expect the return? Is that where our minds need to go to, to make this law operable in our lives? You know, when we, when we're given something, should we have do it with the intention on knowing that I know I'm going to get it back and actually seeing that through. All right. So one, like when we give, is it really coming from the heart or is it coming um, just because you're doing it for a return? But yeah, you can expect a return. You can, you can expect that. But the more love you put on it, the more love you put on it and the better the energy you, okay, okay, here we go. When you, when you plant an apple seed, do you expect an apple tree? <laughs> You know what I'm, saying? what I'm saying? You planted a seed. Can you expect an apple tree? Yes. Well, the better you take care of the soil. So what is the soil in this case? Um, um, your mind. And and you watering, you water that soil with your energies that you're putting out. So if you are, like I said, if you're giving, yes, you can expect that I'm going to receive this back. But you've got to be careful that you're not in a how do you say um in a state where it's like uh uh what is the, the term where somebody just uh you, it's supposed to come to me and that that kind of energy that's going to block your flow but just when you know that it will come back to you then it's not a big deal it's like okay i'm gonna give this away i know it's gonna come back i'm not worried about it but when you're sitting there stressing about it well when i'm gonna get it back i know i put this out universe with you know where's mine <laughs> then that's a different energy you blocking your flow but when you know it's going to come back you ain't stressing about it you're like oh okay i'm good i know i know i'm gonna be taken care of i'm good and that's that's one of the things that we're not you know understanding yeah if you're gonna put it out there that's good but don't expect it know it because when you know it then you ain't stressing about it you follow what i'm saying uh, this ain't this ain't about belief. Right. I believe that it's gonna come. No, 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 no. And I ain't gonna stress about it because I know the universe always got my back. Period. I'm not gonna block my flow because when you put that stressful energy out, uh, then you make it. You blocking this. I'm gonna tell you something. I gotta go into this because <laughs> I talk about, um, you know how people. We need to, you know, we're so stuck on this money thing. You know, since since we're so stuck on money and thinking of money is the end all be all, I need to give you some understandings about what it is and how to get it to flow back to you. All right. Um, when we're talking about money, once again, it is a seed. It is a currency. Um, everything is a currency. Okay. And I talk about, to, to my sisters especially, treat your money like you would treat your man. You understand? So, or, or treat a man rather. You understand? So when you think about it, all right? So we got to, so you wake up and uh, you and your man wake up and y'all are happy and hey, good morning, baby. Blah, and y'all kiss and, you know, you made them breakfast and Y'all sitting at the table enjoying each other's company. And yes, I'm going to have a good day today because, baby, I got this account I'm working on, blah, blah, blah. And, and y'all is sharing good information. And you send him out into the world. Again, he is currency. And he gets out there. He goes to his job. And, you know, he's loving his boss. His boss is loving him. He's good with his coworkers. His clients are good and happy with what he's doing and what he's producing. He's excited at work. He's thinking about you the whole day. He can't wait to get back home to you. When it's time for him to leave, he gets in his car. He get, put, put, pulls in the driveway. He parks. He comes to the house. He kisses you. Hey, baby, glad to be home. How was your day? That is how your money is. Now, you wake up in another situation 
Well, you, you, you are in a bad mood. You woke up on the wrong side of the bed, all right? And you get out of the bed and you are just aggravated and angry about everything and everything. Who is this, uh, who is this bitch in your phone? Every time I look in your phone, it's a new bitch. Who is this? And who is the helper that keep liking your all your pages on Facebook? Who is that? What, what is this going on? You got somebody today? And well, here's some toast and it's burnt. And you are aggravated the hell out of him. And he goes to work. He's pissed off. His, he don't like his boss. His boss fussing at him and writing him up. He can't get along with his co-workers. The, he's got people at his job cursing him out. And he really don't want to come back home. If he comes back home, if he comes back home, he going to get there. He going to park in the driveway. He going to chill out. I don't even know if I want to go up in here because I want to deal with this. That's a currency. And you put an energy on that currency. It's the same way with your money. When you got, you know, you at the uh, Georgia Power Bill, a uh, uh, play, excuse me, and you are writing your check and you are, uh, uh, you know, you pissed off because uh, I'm sick of these people. I want to slap everybody up in Georgia Power because this bill is too high and this and that and that. You are blocking the, the the energy going to the currency. It can't come back to you <laughs> if it comes back to you. First does not care who you're giving the currency to. She don't care. The question is what kind of energy did you put behind the currency that you sent out into the universe? You follow what I'm saying? So it just like the woman, she went to her Frank and Beverly Mays concert. She invested in the universe who's the universe her she's the universe if she invested in somebody else like she paid the hair uh dresser that's the universe from in her shoes that's the universe she paid for frank and beverly's tickets he's the universe she invest and when she sent it out she sent that seed out with a positive energy the universe by law must return it to her the universe doesn't care where you're putting the seed or where's the, the 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 currency is going as long as the energy you put behind it is positive it must come you follow what i'm saying indeed so that's what about the law of compensation and understanding that everything is a currency and everything has energy you think the money is just oh this is this is a dollar it don't mean nothing uh yes it does is everything is alive every everything every element is alive and that's what we forget when i talk about mitochondria and how she's in everything she's in your water like we don't think we think water is just oh you know that's just you know just water 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 has feelings and i talk about that in my um my video where i do um the uh what was the um i'm drawing a blank but there's a video i'm gonna post it up and it's called oh re reincarnation that's what it is reincarnation uh and i, I talk about how water has an energy it, it has feelings it has emotions that's why i tell you you know you know don't you know when you get around water don't be angry don't don't be going off because you're you're putting an energy on that water okay what am i talking about okay because i, I mean and when you start getting into what water is and how scientists are like oh okay i'm gonna give you an example since we're talking about this and you can go and try it for yourself it doesn't cost you any money but so you can see how water has its own energy and its feelings what i want you to do it's three glasses of water yeah keep your tap water doesn't matter it's your three glasses of water and you're going to label them label one love label one indifference and label the other one hate and what you're going to do is that one that uh, uh says love you're going to pick it up and you're going to tell it i love you talk to it hey i love you you're the greatest whatever you want to say put it down for two or three days and, and watch what happens Pick up that love, that bottle that says indifferent. Uh, 
what? You know what? You don't even have to pick that one up. Say nothing to it. But pick up that one that called that's it's labeled hate and tell it, I can't stand you. You're worthless. You're nothing. You understand? And then sit it down for two or three days. Sit them all there and watch what happens when you come back. I did this and I actually have a video on this. I was amazed because I came back and the glass labeled hate said uh, it had mold in it. The other one was fine. I did this another one. Here's another one. When you uh, if y'all have flowers, those little you know those flowers grow. Get same same thing. Take those three glasses of water, love, and different hate. Put your flower in each one of them, and do the same thing. Talk to the one that says love. Tell it you love it. Indifferent, don't do anything. The one that says hate, uh, tell it you can't stand it, and then. Watch what happens two or three days later. It doesn't cost you no money. That's science right there in your house. And you get to see it for yourself how water and even the flower and the plant, because they all got water in them, they have energies and whatever they have, it's a currency. And so when you put an energy on it, depending on how, what, how, what kind of energy you put, that's going to determine um, how it responds. So you're going to see that the flower that says hate is going to die the fastest. The one that you labeled love and you talked to and you gave it a positive energy, it's going to, it's going to live longer. We can see this. So I'm not, I'm not just talking about just, um, you know, just, a, oh, this could be, and this is, you know, this is good spiritual talk. No, say it for yourself. <laughs> Thing has water in it. Everything is living, even this pen, these things, they're, they're currency. And whatever energy you put on it is going to determine whether it comes back to you. Okay, talk to me, Lashana. Hey, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm understanding, and I think you definitely, um, you know, drove it home with the examples, you know, so changes happen. Um, cause I mean, you know, the energy around the world, the people are hurting, so on and so forth. But like you say, it's no victims. And at the end of the day, life is what you make it. And we are all responsible for our own, you know, happiness at the end of the day and our peace of mind. Um, did you want to get into the law of duality? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what'd you think about the law of duality? T tell us what you know about the law of duality. Um, well, I hadn't looked into it. Now, you did um, give me the example okay, of well then we'll go the with farmer okay. who had got home. Okay. Let me get it then. Let you, me get it. Let me get on it. <laughs> well, I haven't looked into it, but that gave me an understanding on how we use it. Definitely. Okay. So, here we go. Um, when we're talking about the law of duality we're talking about how everything whether you think is positive or negative a side to it there's a positive and a negative side to everything and the, we're not learning how to find that other side we're so stuck in our emotions and our feelings that we're, we're so you know how they say every cloud has a silver lining well, that's real. It's just, it's just a statement about duality. Everything, even things that are used to hurt you, they can be used to uplift you. When we're talking about a knife, a knife can be used to uh, help you cook something and prepare something uh, or, or free yourself from something, and it can be used to kill. You know, all things have duality. So let's, um, what, what I want to get into is, um, you know, an example when we're talking about uh, the law of duality is that we're going to learn to use the things that are created to do us harm to uplift ourselves. That's what we want to do. So I want to, you know, if you were talking about the donkey and the farmer. So let, let me tell this story about the donkey and the farmer. And I love this because it really talks about, again, the law of duality. So there's a farmer uh that was walking through 
in this big field. And what ended up happening was that the field uh, had this big ditch in it. The, the uh, donkey ended up falling into the ditch. And so, you know, of course, it's so deep that the farmer couldn't just reach down and pull up the donkey. And what ended up happening is he was like, okay, uh, well, he needed to go back to his barn, which was far out. It took him a while to go back to his barn. He got a rope. He got a shovel. He didn't have anybody else who he could depend on to help him because he felt like the donkey was going to die. And so uh, at any rate, the farmer gets back to the ditch and he tries to use the rope to pull the donkey out. And of course, all he can do is attach it around his neck and it was too heavy to pull out for him anyway. And so what ended up happening is he said, you know, he decided, you know, the well was in there. Just, I mean, the, the donkey was in there well. He was, and he was, uh, you know, probably hurt and upset and, you know, just thought he was gonna die. And the farmer thought he was gonna die. So he's like, well, you know what, I can't, pull this donkey out. Even after the, the farmer tried to dig him out, he, he realized this is just not going to work. So what the farmer decided to do was that he was just going to bury the donkey. He's like, I'm because he's going to die in there. So I'm just going to bury the donkey in there. So what he started to do was he started shoveling dirt into the hole. And now the donkey is starting to well even more because you know, the thought is, well, I'm, I'm going to die in here and you're just going to bury me. So he's shoveling the dirt into the hole, shoveling the dirt. And eventually he started to realize as he's shoveling that this, the, the welling the donkey was doing was going down. And then he continues to shove, shovel and, you know, he, he hears the welling stop. And he, could, he, he does this, this last shovel, he picks up the shovel and he throws the dirt over in there. And then he goes over and looks into the hole and there the donkey is shaking the dirt off, shaking the dirt off his back. And then the farmer's, farmer's like, ah, oh, he's, I thought he was dying. No, what the, the donkey had learned to do is oh, I'm gonna shake it off my back and then I'm gonna step up on it to uplift myself. So the farmer got the, okay, well, what I'm going to do is continue to shovel this dirt so maybe I can get him high enough to where he can come up out of there. So he continued to shovel the dirt into the, the ditch and the donkey continued to shake it off his back and step up on it. And eventually it was high enough so that the donkey could jump out. Well, what is the moral of this story? All right, here you got dirt and two different beings were trying to use that dirt for different reasons. All right, so you got the farmer trying to use this dirt to bury the donkey. And then you've got the donkey that said, no, I'm gonna use this same dirt to uplift them. Understand, how are you, we looking at these things, these entities that are being used to uh, hold us down and to oppress us, how are we using it? Are we understanding the other side of it? Well, what's this application in real world, Diva Lurie, how we use that? You know, the donkey and the farmer, that's great, but how do we use that uh, in the real life? Okay, understand this. I'm going to give you, you an example of how we use it in the real life. When we're talking about, for example, the, a lot of us, those of us who are studying law and getting deep, deeper into this, we understand that the birth certificate is used to keep us um, uh, subjugated because we don't understand what it is. So we've been told, oh, well, they... They turned us into slaves and they made us a, 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 a all capital letter dead fictitious corporation and we slaves and they trading us on the stock market. And, and, and so because we don't understand what this tool is that's being used against us, we all stuck in our emotions. We angry and we mad. And we don't know how to use it to our advantage. Well, here's what's going on with the birth certificate. And I, I'm going to just skim over it real quick. And those of you who really want to know more of uh, those where I talk about this, and there are plenty of videos out there that go into this, but your mother's birth certificate, the birth certificate that your mother creates is a, an account with funds and credits in it to pay for any and everything that you need and want. Every everything is already paid for it. The, the, when she signed that birth certificate, 
and all of that, she gave the state permission to create an account for you. The deal is this makes you part owner and creditor to the United States corporations. You don't have to pay for anything, but because we're ignorant, because we're ignorant of who we are and what this is, all right, we're upset about it and we're allowing it to bury us. We're allowing it to bury us. Well, when you understand that it can pay for everything you need and want, okay, well then now, you turn it around and you're using it up here. You're standing on it. You're using the thing that we're uh, we're learning how to do um, with the law of duality. What is this account? This account, yeah, it's being used against us because we don't know who we are. Well, shake off all that negative energy and aggravation and anger and understand what's going on and how you can use this to uplift yourself. You understand what I'm saying? So it's... um. That's the law of duality. And when we learn to do more of that, uh, all of this anger about, uh, uh, whatever we anger about, we anger about so many things. But when we come off of that and we start learning to uh, recognize what's going on and understand that these are all energies that we're putting out. And if you are ignorant, you're putting out an energy. <laughs> Stop being ignorant. Learn about this stuff. If you feel like, if you feel that something is keeping you down, find out what it is. And then if you want answers, once again, give answers. If you want it, you must give it away. If you want answers, be willing to give some. Be willing to help somebody. One of the things, the other things in our society is that we have, we have stopped in how to give, how to be the giving beings that we are. And so, um, you know, once we learn uh, how to continue to giving, then you know, we can go to another level. We will go to it. We are, we get, we're going there. We're getting to another level where we're starting to be more of a giving people and starting to work there. for the universe. We learn to work for the universe, then uh, everything around. All right. I'm sorry, Shonda. You said what now? No, I'm sorry. To cut. It's a delay um, in the in the voices, but I was saying, yeah, we are going there. We are there already. You know, what I'm saying with applying these laws and making our lives um, better and teaching people how to do the same. So, you know, that's what that's what this season is all about. So, you know, I'm ready to put in work. Excellent. So, what else um, did you want to go into on this one on the um, law of the uh, universal laws and dealing with uh, manifesting? Tell me how what we've spoken about has helped. Well, I mean, you gave a, um, you know, you gave us some good information on all of them. So now it's just going to be up to everybody to look into it further, so you can get a better understanding um, of the laws in order to apply them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I've I've learned that you know you can't. Um, expect different results doing the same things so we got to switch it up you know we've been taught one way to live and we see that that's not getting us anywhere personally as a people um so we need to get back to the origin and you know the laws of moses do not run this universe so you know these are what we need to start embracing and you know, studying to show ourselves approved getting this information getting this knowledge sharing it with our families and friends so that we can uplift each other but it starts with you you know individually mm -hmm. um were you able to pull uh see if there was a pull up the questions on there by any chance let's see if um because i can't i don't see any questions but let me see let me see. I think you want to just comment. Yeah. So if you all have any questions, please, um, you know, post them in the, the comments. It's unfortunate because, um, you know, this is a very important topic that a lot of people, they're not getting. Uh, we stay in the, the victim mode and it, and it, <laughs> and it, uh, and it causes us to, uh, You know, to stay in a in a in a situation where we're subject. Uh -huh. So I got us says lies. 
Yeah, well, I don't know which is lies. Why don't you expound on that, Tina Turner, so we can uh, we can uh, make sure we address what you feel is lies. Let's see. Peace upon you, Lashonda. Yes, uh, where are are you, Diva? I'm in North America. That's my one of my friends from. Uh, oh yes, a couple of my friends, Turner. I, I'm really interested in why you would say lies. Why don't you expound on that? And unless we, she, she might just be a troll. So, unless not in my friends list. So um, um, did you get? Did you see any questions over there? No, just pretty much comments. Um, another, and this is what she needed to hear. Uh -huh. So you know that this is right on, on point. So you know um, next week, what I hope to do, and which we are planning um, a seminar in Texas in a couple of weeks to discuss uh, contract law and stuff like that. We're going to get back into it. Um, but next week, Empress, maybe we can do our next live can be uh, where we kind of go over that to start, you know, getting people interested in it again. Because like I told you, we had the whole nation uh, ready to access those social security trusts uh, a couple of years ago. And actually, through the information that we provided, they were actually utilizing those funds and paying off bills and all kind of stuff. So they know it works. They know it works, but it's just a way that it has to be done. Um, I told you the reason why we're just not into taking any oaths um, with anybody. That's that. That's you know where we are with that. So you and I haven't had a chance to discuss this further, um, but you know it's definitely something that is is showing up again in my life. So I feel like I need to move forward with it, and um, you know if we can discuss it next week in a live show again to you know get people interested and to you know get some heads heads in here so we can actually move forward with this and start helping people get out of debt or whatever it is they're dealing with it, you know what I'm saying? And um, just, you know, stuff like that is, is, is a main stress and, and strain on each each and every every person. Um, you know, it seems like in the world, really. So if we can um, start moving forward with that, I think that it kind of help release some of the tension and, and get people focusing more on, you know, more important things like the universal laws. Well, and applying those, because like you said, it's not all about the money. Um, it's an abundance of resources, and it's time to tap into that. Right, but here's the deal, though. The money is not the problem. The money is not the problem. The way people think is the problem. So if you, the, the universal laws are first, before your yeah. money issues. Because when you change these higher laws in your mind and the way you think, all of that must come into order. All of it. If you want, you think, see, people think, well, if I get some money, then I'm going to be doing good. Well, if you change your mind, you're going to get some money and then you're going to be doing good. You, you want to cut out, you can't cut out the first part. The first part is understanding you are creating everything. Because as soon as you get this change, all that other stuff, under, that's why, okay. I also posted a link. This is in the uh, title. It is is dealing with the universal laws, and it also deals with the uh, the the hierarchy of laws. The highest on that whole totem pole is the universal laws. You must start there. See, people be trying to cut out this. I'm I'm a, you know I'm gonna manipulate this account, and when you manipulate these laws, you don't need these little accounts here. This this is nothing. When you change this. Everything in this dimension must change. So when we're talking about people stressed out and whatever, it's because of their mind. Their, and this is what we can't get. You think just because some money comes in, is oh, everything's going to be good. Well, guess what? I, okay, I got to go back to this. Um, these universal laws, uh, what we need to look at is that the universe is like a bank, all right? When we're talking about energies that are things that we're wanting to receive, these are energies that we're wanting to receive. Well, if you didn't put the energy out, you cannot get it back. Again, the whole premise of universal law is whatever. It is. If you don't put it out, you can't get it back. It's like when you go to a bank, 
You go to a bank, you open up an account with $10, and you go in there talking about, uh, yeah, I need 500 You didn't put 500 in, but you think you're going to get 500 out. You understand what I'm saying? You got to put energy in to get it out. So when we're, you know, when we're receiving these energies, it's because we put in the, the worry and the stress and the strife. And then we want to get out positive and in and, and favor and all this, but you didn't put that energy in. So you want, you want to not worry about money? Put out a positive energy. How do I do that, Diva? Because I ain't got no money. How much money you got? What do you have? Because you're worried about the money. What do you have? Okay. Um, like I talk to people all the time. Every time I don't have no money, but I got all these clothes and stuff, and I got knickknacks for days, and I got a whole bunch of canned goods, and I got to find a way to give it. Again, if you're wanting that, if you want it, you must give it away. Put what you do have because it's not about money. It's not about the money. Learn how to use your resources to bring resources to you. Again, we, you know, no, I, you know, relate to social security and all. That's not where your, that's your mind is where it is. And I can't stress this enough. On this damn planet, and ain't nobody paying attention because they trying to get some money. That money is nothing but a drain on your energies. Focus on your mind. That's where... <laughs> I can't stress that enough. And that's and it kind of when I get into this, it kind of makes me a little bit um disappointed because you know everybody keeps talking about money. Money, and that's what's causing me stress. What's causing you stress is this right here. You're not using this. You're thinking everything has to do with money, and the things that you're doing to get this money are putting more negative energies out into the universe. You're working on a job that you hate. You don't even like to wake up to go out there and do it. Once again. You're putting out negative energies. You can't stand your coworkers. You can't stand your boss. You complain about every time. You don't like your church. Your church, you go to it. You've been there for 20 years and you complain about the preacher. You complain about Sister Just. Again, we, we're not getting the fact that we are the ones creating all of this in our dimension. <laughs> So, okay, no, it's not about, you know, where if I get some money, what you want to learn how to do is when you get some money, it, it might be $5. Learn how it's to tight, but it's right. Huh? It's tight, but it's right. And I, I know it's hard to hear, but when we learn to share, the universe is going to return it. I can't, again, I know this because I, I had to learn it. I, I, I manipulate this specifically. For this purpose, I'm like, I, I want to see how this works. Does this work when I get put into the universe? Does it work? I know it works. And I know that when we start doing this, that, you know, again, you're going to live on a higher level. Uh, it's not about the money. F the money. F the money. I'm going to tell you, when I left North America, I was like, I don't want to see another damn dollar bill. And it was like, I didn't even want to deal with money. I just wanted to barter. The more I tried to move away from it, the more it kept jumping in my hands because I wasn't worried about it. I was like, here you go. Um, and I'm like, look, no, I just gave that to you. You know, that's for love. No, 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 no. Here you go. I, I use now, it's like now I use money to as a tool to help people. That's why, like I, I, you know, um, like I told you, the same way I did with that woman with the hotel, I started doing that with um, uh, just people who are living. And I would go to maybe a hostel and I'd give them a uh, thousand bucks for, you know, just this, I put them in envelopes and, you know, I'd sign them and I'd have the, the mask sign them. And it's like, give this to people who, who, who come in here who need help. All right. That's what I want you to do. And that's what they did. They loved it. I did this with, you know, just so many other things. And now, like, when it comes to, um, when it came to where I was living, I stay in houses now. Nice apartments with all of the amenities. It's already taken care of. And so I'm just, I use these laws to, to manifest the things in my life that I want. I know it works. And so, 
I'm saying, you know, when you say to me, oh, you know, so we can start, we can get some money. No, that's not, that's, no, you got to get, get money right here. This is the money right here. And nobody's getting that. Uh, well, I'm going to say nobody. We're getting it. We're getting it. But sometimes I get excited because I'm like, this is where the key is. Um, all right, sis, what else uh, we got on this? You with me? Shonda? You with me, LaShonda? Shonda K? Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? All right, so guys, listen. Um, get this. Get these universal laws down. Uh, because this is where you're talking about, you know, your money, uh, you're talking about taking away your stress and all of that. It's right here in the universal laws. There's some laws that I'm going to, uh, you, you know, repeat. I want you to write them down and, uh, you know, say them, say them over and over again. If you want it, you must give it away. If you want it, you must give it away. Treat your money like you would treat your man. All right. If you treat a good man that you love, uh, look the law of compensation whatever you put out must come back many times over again another law we live in abundance all right when you put out a seed the universe will bring you many in return again law of compensation law of duality that thing that is stressing you or you feel is subjugating you learn to turn it around and, and use it for positivity in your life this means you have to you have to think outside of the box you got to think outside of the box. All right. And, um, and again, also please a uh, law of attraction. You're going to attract to you, whatever you are. And remember you are the universe. So when you lie to yourself, the universe has no choice, but to give you that energy back. And it's going to give you it in a form of somebody who is, uh, who is, um, somebody who is, yeah, I'm sorry, my sister's up. But yeah, it's going to give it back to you in the form of somebody who is outside of you. And you're not, you, you've got to learn to recognize that. Did I, if somebody's outside of you lying to you, then you've got to recognize that, okay, let me look at self. What have I been doing to myself? All right. So once again, I thank you all for joining us, Diva. Uh, we hope you catch you on our, our session next week because we're going to do contract writing where you can actually join in and ask questions and we're going to be doing um uh, a couple of other sessions next week and i'll probably be in another state so at any rate diva i look forward to talking to you soon i am out leave your questions below thank you so much get on these universal laws i'm out peace <laughs>